it is actually very easy to get anything you want from your woman if you know how to love her right so the question is do you know how to love her right in today's video we're going to be looking at the five love languages authored by gary chapman and in his book he outlined these love languages for us to be able to understand how we love to give and receive love so in order for you to be able to love your woman right, you know, you need to know the mumu buttons. <laughs> buttons that you would press and unlock, you know, all of the possibilities that you want. At the end of this video, you would have learned what your primary love language is and of course that of your spouse. In order for us to know that, we have to look at the five love languages one after the other. And in no particular order, let's kick it. Number one, words of affirmation. Now this is a situation where, you know, you show appreciation and love to your spouse spouse by you know telling them you appreciate them you love them just by words of your mouth or by written notes but it has to do with words okay this one particularly most women actually love it because you know women are driven by what they hear right most times when you tell them something they tend to take it into deeper considerations words of affirmation is a way of showing love it can be your own way of showing love and if it is your way of showing love you also want to be loved back in that manner number two act of service some people like it when you help them to complete a task or you just help them out maybe they are busy they are doing something and you just come around and you help them to them that is like the ultimate thing so people whose primary love language is acts of service they just appreciate it so much when you're there to serve and most times they also show appreciation and love to other people especially to their spouses by serving them because that is how they love to receive love and to give love let me give you a typical example before i got married i lived with my sisters for a while so two of my sisters actually and at different times when i stayed with them they were already married with children right so while i was still with them i was watching how they were living in their homes and how their husbands were behaving it was more like a learning process a learning curve for me right there are so many things i learned from them that i felt was like applicable to every relationship i mean every marriage now fast forward to when i got married you know i was expecting a certain thing from my husband because of the things that i've seen from my sister's um, respective homes one of them her husband doesn't have any problem waiting to be served like in fact uh, when he's hungry he will make the food himself dish his own and quietly eat and just mind his business when he's hungry he doesn't even wait for her to even you know come and serve him his food and all of that most times he likes to make his food safe and just eat it or when he comes back he goes straight to the kitchen get his food and eat so i saw all of these things i did not know that it was training me and i kind of perceive it as normal to everywhere i find myself now i am married and somehow subconsciously i was expecting my husband to behave in that manner i could remember one day i was actually very busy on that day you know i did a lot of chores and so but food was ready i made the food and then my husband was like ah, babe are they hungry now you know give me food and i'm like ah, you know go carry food eat I food don't done i know sister are they busy you self pity me now and i was like so if i don't go give you your food you know go eat and then he told me that, no, I'm not going to eat too. I will stay like that. Do you know that he stayed like that? He didn't go to the kitchen to dish food for himself. He just went to his room and he just, you know, <laughs> now I can laugh about it. But then it was not funny. Like it was a serious problem to me because I was like, ah, this guy won't kill me for this house. Like all the work what they do, you know, if you just go carry food, eat, which I'm saying, go the wait, make a condi, serve the food. Sometimes, of course, I serve his food, you know, but there are times that he go just day day. I just feel say, bros, just help yourself now, you know. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, but I did not know this was like becoming a problem for us because I was beginning to think that this guy won't use housework, finish meal. You won't help me most times. You'll just be there and you want me to always. And there is something he always does when i bring his food to him he would always tell me thank you he might not tell me thank you for other things but you see food when i give him food he will always tell me thank you sometimes if i don't even answer because in my mind i'll be like i'm trying to be thank you maybe you bring money where will you stay cook food you know but then i began to think and i began to do some research and then boom it dawned on me that this is his love language he loves the act of service he likes to be served and I also remember that when we were cutting, several of the times that I visited, he would always make food and bring it to me. 
and I go eat. So that was why then I was like going here while like, ah, why is it that even that time she be they give me food now? You know, if you go kitchen, go carry food, eat. You know, so I felt like he has completely changed. Maybe because he was trying to get me that time. Now we don't get me. You know, one can they do like the way they do before? I did not get the point. And you know what? <laughs> All of those subconscious orientation I had that uh, man, you know, sometimes you could just go kitchen carry. I just packed all of those things, you know, and shoved them down the drain because I had to do a lot of unlearning and relearning in order to be able to thrive. Because the truth of the matter is marriage is somehow, you know, no matter how much knowledge you have, once you go into marriage, at some point you'll be shocked. Because you know, all of those things where you know, some of them will come the applicable again. I'm telling you facts. <laughs> I'm sure like everyone who has been married at some point, you just realize that, come, I thought this is how it's supposed to be. And I saw this thing be. So in my own case, it took me time to realize and I am so grateful that I was able to come to this realization and to people like Gary Chapman who took their time to pen down their wisdom. You know, imagine that people don't come out to put out their wisdom out there. Some of us will not learn these things. Okay, so it's very important to understand what your spouse's love language is. Honestly, the moment I knew this, no problem, uh, before he even said Jack Robinson, I don't serve him food, the day table, go eat your food, bros. And he would always tell me, thank you. And I would tell him, you're welcome, my love. Up next, quality time. Some people love to spend quality time with their spouses. You know, some people who are very busy, their work is always taking them away from home and... It might just be that that your wife that is always nagging, that is always complaining. It might just be that her love language is actually quality time. She wants to see you more. She wants to be able to have you around. Spend some time together. Go out together. Go on that trip together. Her own is that she just wants to spend quality time with you. And it cuts across both parties, right? Some men too, their love language is quality time. They want to see you. That is why they're always like, babe, can we hang out this weekend? Can we? Let me say they disturb. Now, you won't love language with that so lest i forget i'm going to leave a link to gary chapman's website in the description where you can take a test to find out what your primary love language is so before you go ensure to check that link check that website and do the test it's completely free and this is not sponsored right i'm just putting out this information because i believe that it will help people so let's go to the next point which is receiving gifts ah some people like gifts you know it's like women we like gifts some of us like it when you buy us gifts and you know what it doesn't have to be something so big things as simple as shawarma for Nigeria, we'll get what they call shawarma, right? <laughs> or as simple as buying her, even if it's a rose flower. As long as it's a gift, she's going to appreciate it if that is her primary love language. So some people love to receive gifts. And people who love to receive gifts also, they like to express love to other people by giving gifts to them. So before I go to the last point, I'm going to say here that when it comes to love languages, this is how you show love to everybody, including your children, your spouse is, of course, most importantly your children your mom and you know even your friends this is not particular only to people who are in a relationship or people who are married if you have siblings and you're not married yet when you understand their love languages you'll be able to show them love better if it's someone who enjoys quality time you know that okay fine i don't even need to give this person money make her just hang around with them ego appreciates me you know so it's very key to help us know how to show love to everybody and of course love is a universal thing because even god in heaven himself Himself is love. His love and love is him. He sent his son to die for our sin. No love can be greater than that. He gave the ultimate gift, right? Jesus Christ gave the ultimate gift to us, which is a show of love. So love is something that everybody should be able to express and receive, okay? And that takes me to the last point, which is physical touch. A lot of people, their primary language is physical touch. When you touch them, even if it's just sitting on the sofa and watching a movie and then your hand is like touching their tools, holding their shoulder, a pat on the back, you know, a hug every now and then, just little, little touch here and there. They absolutely love it. And this is their own primary love language. And how would you even know if it is their own primary love language, you notice that they also do the same thing. Because like I said, how people express love to others is also how they like 
to receive love okay so this is just the way it is so when your wife is always touchy touchy she likes to you know when she's passing she touch your hair touch your arm all of those things when you're walking on the street she likes to hold you close sometimes not before sure maybe say she just want to show everybody for her and say you know her own you know now just her way of expressing love and also she likes for you to reciprocate that love in that same manner it will be more effective if you don't reciprocate it in that manner, maybe you go ahead and buy her a gift. She would like it too, but she would not appreciate it as much as she would if it were you, you know, touching her back, being the touchy touchy. These are the five love languages. And honestly, trust me, when you know how to love your spouse better, you'll be able to get anything you want from them. When you know their momo button, they're very important to learn these things, know their momo button, so you know what buttons to press. And also, it will help you to have, you know, a more healthy and productive relationship. Basically, when you know your spouse's love language, now you're able to love them better by showing them love in the manner in which they would appreciate and love the most. And of course, not necessarily because you want to get something from them, right? But because you just want them to be happy. I mean, that is what relationships should be about, right? Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. And if you're new here, my name is Wendy Zill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time, bye for now.